This is a picture test in practical anatomy of the reproductive system. You may use the video as a revision for the topic or as a self-assessment tool. For the purpose of self-assessment, I will allow two seconds of pause for each picture before starting to comment so that you may pause the video and spend your own time to read the question and come up with the answer. Then you can replay the video to confirm your answer by listening to the comments and explanations. Now I will deal with the gross anatomy of a male pelvis and a perineum. Identify the muscle A, what is its function? This is a dissection of the superficial perineal pouch of a male. On the lateral side, the structure is the crust of the penis. So there is a crust in here on this side, and there is a crust on the other side. The two crura continue forward as the corpus cavernosum. And here the crust at the root of the penis only is covered by muscle fibers, the skeletal muscle fibers, which is called ischiocavernosus muscle. The muscle contracts during erection and helps maintain erection. Muscle B, the B lies in the anal triangle. You can see here is the anus, and this is the imaginary line between the two ischial tuberosities that divides the perineum into a urogenital triangle anteriorly and an anal triangle posteriorly, and on the sides of the anal triangle is the ischio anal fossa. So this is the ischio anal fossa, and the fossa is bounded laterally by muscle fibers, which are the obturator and ternus muscle, and medially it is bounded by the muscle fibers that come from above and medially, directed medially, and this is the levator ani muscle. So this is the other levator ani muscle here. What is its nerve supply? The beta ani is supplied by the pudendal nerve and its inferior rectal branch. Identify the structure A, name its posterior extension. So structure A is part of the penis, body of the penis, and this is the corpus cavernosum on the dorsal aspect of the penis. You can see the tunica albuginea surrounding it the thick whitish fibrous tissue. So this is the corpus cavernosum. Posteriorly, uh, it extends as the crust of the penis and the root and the superficial perineal pouch. Anteriorly, it ends blindly and it is capped by the glands of the penis, but the glands is not part of the corpus cavernosum. It is the, the anterior distension of the corpus spongiosum. Name the peritoneal pouch here in B. So to be oriented, this is the urinary bladder. So behind the urinary bladder, there is a peritoneal pouch. Of course, the entire extent of the pouch is not shown here because an organ has been removed. The organ is the rectum. So the pouch extends between the rectum, which has been removed here, anterior surface of the rectum and the posterior surface of the bladder and the superior surface of the bladder and this is called the rectovesical pouch. Name the fossa into which the index finger is introduced. This is a male perineum. You can see here this is the region of the scrotum. So this is the urogenital triangle, boundary of the urogenital triangle. It's the imaginary transverse line that splits the perineum into an anterior urogenital triangle and a posterior anal triangle. So now the index finger is in the anal triangle on the side of the anus, this is the anus, and the fossa in here is the ischio anal fossa. The muscle that forms the medial boundary of the fossa is levator ani muscle, and the facial canal that is located at the lateral boundary of the fossa is a facial canal within the fascia of our obturator internus muscle, and this is called the pudendal canal of Alcock. Name the erectile tissue located deep to A. Erectile tissue here is the crust of the penis. The fibromuscular tissue in B is located in the anal triangle, and this fibromuscular tissue is located posterior to the anal canal here, extending between the anal canal and the coccyx, 
So it's called the anococcygeal body. Name the musculofacial structure enclosed by the yellow lines. Uh, these yellow lines, they demarcate the deep perineal pouch. You can see here, this is the prostate gland. The apex lies on the superior fascia of the urogenital diaphragm. And this is the inferior fascia of the urogenital diaphragm or the perineal membrane. And so this is the deep perineal pouch in between them. Within the deep perineal pouch passes the membranous urethra and it will be surrounded by skeletal muscle fibers, sphincter urethry muscle. So this is the first muscle that is present here in the deep perineal pouch. The other muscle which is present more posteriorly and this is the deep transverse perineal muscle. It has its twin muscle in the superficial perineal pouch, superficial transverse perineal muscle, and both of them are attached in the midline to the perineal body. So the two muscles in the deep perineal pouch are the sphincter urethry and the deep transverse perineal muscle. This is a transverse section through a male pelvis. Just to be oriented, here's the anterior aspect and this is the posterior aspect. You can see here the head of the femur passing into the acetabulum. Anteriorly, this is the rectus abdominis. You can see the two recti are very narrow because we are at the lower part of the abdomen. And behind that, the structure here is the urinary bladder, a little bit distended, and that's why it's coming up above the level of the pubic symphysis within the abdomen. Posterior to the urinary bladder, and you can see here, these are the uh, seminal vesicles located posterior to the urinary bladder, separating between the urinary bladder and the rectum. So this is the rectum in here. On the side wall of the pelvis, uh, the muscle that closes the obturator foramen is the obturator internus muscle. So here is the obturator internus. You can see that the muscle changes its direction at the level of the ischial spine, just below the level of the ischial spine and it's going to be attached to the greater trochanter of the femur. Here's the greater trochanter of the femur. So this is the obturator internus muscle. And the fascia of our obturator internus giving rise to some a few muscle fibers here, which constitute the levator ani muscle. 